right. So, okay, so it's, it's starting with me anyway. Um, I, I've put up community liaison group because I think we really need to get something structured and organised to go out and spread our message around the city. There's lots of ideas floating around, but we have no one to synthesise them or put them into action yet. So, I'm, I'm suggesting that we meet maybe tomorrow afternoon. Um, yeah, everyone can come, put in ideas, and then I'm also suggesting that before the rally on Saturday at maybe 10 o'clock, I know a lot of uni students are finishing exams, and they're all keen to come down then, before the rally, and get like stuck into this whole community outreach thing. So maybe tomorrow, is everyone okay with tomorrow at maybe... Uh, Five? Oh, no. Maybe after four. the general assembly. Uh, maybe after the general like assembly. Hard to work during the day. All right, we'll meet after tomorrow after the general assembly. Yeah. Cool. Um, also, I got approached today by some uni students. Um, that on, I think on the 16th and 17th, they're hiring this church across the road for a big grad show event. They just wanted to let us all know that there's. A lot of people there over those two nights, so they just didn't want to disturb anyone and just let us know that. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, cool. So, meeting tomorrow after General Assembly. Um, any idea what the initiative? Yeah, I wrote that because okay. I don't have a computer, but. There's an awesome, awesome video I saw today, uh, narrated by David Icke about the uh, Madrid occupation, and I saw it with a group of people, and we all got, you know, like really hyped. It was fucking awesome, really empowering, really beautiful words, and I don't have a computer or anything, but I really, really think we should watch it, everybody, you know, like really everybody, because we're just gonna feel love. Yeah, I don't have a computer, so initiative, whoever wants to do that, would be fucking awesome. Thank you. Sorry for the bad language, by the way. Um, right. Maybe we can get that sorted after General Assembly tonight. Yeah, someone can, yeah. Um, oh, Josie. Josie on Silent March. Is Josie here? Josie's not here. Jose! Jose! Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, man. No, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Jose. Jose. <laughs> Sorry about my, my bad language, but I, I think it's very important to show people what we think. To show people what we think. So I suggest a silent march, or at least a part of our march, or our rally, when we all out to the streets. Like just to be silent, so then maybe we can like show them something, like be silent, and with our with a really nice messages, we can show them what we believe and what we want. So maybe ten minutes can be, ten fifteen minutes on our rally, a time we just go for ten minutes in silent, and that's it. Would you like to set up some sort of group to organize that, or...? Uh, uh, I guess I'm, I'm part of the working group rally, so uh, yeah, I was uh, about to add, there might be a sit-down in the middle of March, and we could do that in silence, yeah. kind of, because the march, the protest itself is programmed to say we've got one hour of marching right, and we use up that walking so quickly in probably half an hour we're done with the march but we're permitted to do whatever we want to do in the streets we just sit down in one of the main streets or in the corner and have a silent moment moment yeah that's great is, is there something concrete where you can organize dates or anything uh, yeah. maybe through the working group for the rally which uh, both of us are in, we can pick it up with the rally Tomorrow and discuss it. Tomorrow will be midday working group. There will be a working beat to make banners, placards. Uh, so, if anyone wants to 
helped out with the rally for this Saturday happening. It's supposedly the rally's happening on Saturday midday. Um, so yeah, anyone wants to just come over. Tomorrow midday? Midday. And we can do anything you want in, in that outfit. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm not sure what, what one, one. I was just wondering whether we could dedicate that, that silence. Um, it's some of the victims of corporate greed, but I think, I don't know, a really good one would be the fact that in just in this country, every year, around 7,000 people die from work-related causes. Right? And most of that's preventable. It's just that because of the profit, you know, because of people driving for profit, pushing people to work faster, cutting on safety costs, um, I think it's a good thing to highlight the fact that the sort of <coughs> corporate greed is more likely to kill you than any other <laughs> True, brother. Well, there comes the time in our life that we got to be the unity of all people. Black and white unite. Let's do it. Let's do it. Because I stand here before you, my people. The reason being is because I survived. I am living proof. When we go for the government, fuck. Pardon the pun. Bye, sisters. Fuck the government. Gandhi, fuck the government because they're gonna fuck us and let's fuck them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, there comes a time in my life when I meet someone important. Then they go and search. Why don't we go and search? Why not? Let's go and fuck the government. Let's fuck them. What's your name? My name is Lang. Who? Lang. What? Lang. <laughs> oh. Lang. Oh. Lang. My name is Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty. Nice to meet you, Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Nice what I'm gonna do with this appearance? Love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Love you, my brother. Love you too. No, man. but I, 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 I believe in what you're doing, and don't take a bad step. Please, <laughs> don't take a bad step. Because we're going to fuck the government. Pardon, pardon my sisters, but I tried to masturbate last night, but man, I had a headache. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you so much. Oh, come and take, come and take, oh, the call. Who come at the come at the court? I won't party now. I won't party now. Euro? You know, my brothers and sisters, you are a good 
beautiful to play. Keep the struggle. Keep the struggle. Don't let no man or no woman put over you because you are here for a purpose. And let's do it. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes. Hey. Yes. <laughs> let's do it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the government. Fuck the government. Yes, I know what you say. Oh. No, I just feel like a big uh, stick. Uh, anyway. Sorry, man. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Sorry. Um, anyone else? I have climbed highest mountains. I have rolled through the fields only to be with you. Only to be with you. Can I have a smoke, please? You got another? You're done. Next one, next one, next one. Next topic. Yeah. Wow. Starry. Hey young guys. Oh, sorry. Is this on the topic of silence? Just on the topic of the silence. What was that? Yeah. Cool. Just on the topic of the silence, guys. I think it's quite important. Um, Although I really sympathise with those lives lost in all different causes. If we're going to make a difference in the world collectively, across the world, we need to make a difference in people's heads. And one of the biggest problems with people's heads these days is they, they find it that they can't, can't seem to sit in silence themselves. Always got to be doing something. Can't just be comfortable silently alone. And I think for part of the movement, this is just my opinion, that that is what helps to create peace inside yourself and then inside others. So dedicating it is a good idea for different, different circumstances, but it's been done before, over and over and over again. Something different for this, for this movement would be to sit in silence for reflection on yourself. Each and every one that's there to be reflected on yourself. To forgive yourself for everything you've done in your life and to love yourself. That's it. That's just a suggestion. Uh, you know, what we're going to be talking about, it's up to you guys. <clears throat> Each and every one to fuck the government. <laughs> 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 we, we, we have a very specific help. Yeah. You, you're welcome to talk, man. This is a symbol to talk. And then you. You know, I, 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 I look into the mirror. And I found out that I was black. <laughs> and my, my, my reflection had a heart attack. Because I found that I was black. I love you guys. Yeah, I love you too, man. Hey, can I, can I just say something at this point while, you, while you're standing there, sir? I really Don't do. come in, sir, please. Okay. So what, what's your name? My name is Denebi Gandu. Denebi Gandu. I'm Mario. Pleased to meet you. Um, is, is it possible, after he's spoken, 
I, because of his passion, and I, I share a similar conviction, and I've come across from a different perspective as an artist, and in the last three years I've written about the struggle and the pain of the family institutions surviving in today's time against the corrupt governments and using the numbers against us. You can't live till you're 75 unless you sleep 20, uh, 25 years. That's eight hours a day, impossible for most hardworking parents. You're not going to make it to your retirement. I, I decided to, 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 I said it's a poetic war. Well, then I'm going to write about it and I'll work hard as I can, but I'll finance an album that's going to speak about the struggle. And hence I became known as MC Antidote. Now I've written some songs that speak about the corrupt guy, and I'd like to I'd like to actually do one of the raps now straight after this brother's spoken because I think he'll enjoy it, and I'd like to get his reply, and your guys what you guys think, and this is my idea on how we can think outside the box a little bit and try and really get into people's heads. Uh, May I? Maybe, no, I maybe, maybe, maybe if we maybe if we can keep it on topic, then after, no after, 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 like if you have an own topic called rap, awesome, as a facilitator, guys, as a facilitator. Um, Sorry, this General Assembly is for discussion of specific topics. Yep. Um, you're welcome to put that to the General Assembly and we can all agree on that. If, if, not, if people disagree, you're welcome to take it over there and do it, sure. man. But like, this is for a specific topics of discussion. Um, so just on that, um, yes. Do you... You know, it comes a time of life. And I just thought, what were you using it? If, if we get a consensus on it happening, like if you talk about that after yes. anyone declines, if someone declines, we won't do it. Yeah, about listen, let's, let's get a consensus on this so that we can go ahead with this action straight away or not. So we'll get a consensus on whether we just see the rap now here in the meeting. Just give me my brother. Yes, no. So does that, does that do you know So you have got a decline, so... You're welcome to do it after the meeting or over there. That's fine. Um, cool. But we really need to because otherwise this whole meeting process will start to fall into. Uh, it won't be a process anymore. Give a bit of a juice, and if I was trying to think of ideas, this is pretty inspiring stuff. And I've got a long time to think of the words, and I think it'll help. But I'll respect the meeting and I'll. Thanks, man. I appreciate that, and I'd like to hear your rap too. Yeah, I'd love to hear it too. Just thank you. Back to. Yeah, I think I think this sort of dedication hasn't been done before. Um, there's lots of sort of different single issue cause, causes that they've remembered um, the dead from different things, but I think this actually helps build peace because to remember to just to to highlight to people, to show to people. I mean, most people don't know the fact that all these people are, are killed by work every year. Yep, and yep. that helps build peace because when they say we have to go to Afghanistan to bomb other people because then we want to make you safe. But we don't need to do it. It, it, be, it becomes complete hypocrisy it's because fine. They don't try and make things safe here. They don't just ignore safety. They actually make it harder for people to make their workplaces safer. So I think it would be, uh, yeah, I think it, it, it hasn't been done before and I think it, it, it would help uh, my people. Yeah. So maybe, maybe this can be discussed in the group that's setting up that action which will be what tomorrow at 12 or something yeah. tomorrow at 12 yeah, we'll come up on Wednesday afternoon saying what's the decision like. yeah so anyone with ideas like that can go in there and discuss and we can brainstorm ideas like that um, so yeah. yeah just as anyone else with anything else on that topic move on no, no, no. oh yeah sorry I just wanted to say that there's no wrong answer to that I mean it's beautiful dedicated to someone or not but some of the most fundamental tools for change is looking inside yourself as a human being and I think that's very very important students work like that but we don't need to come to um, Afghanistan <coughs> because we believe in the idea <coughs> When they come over here, 
Let's, let's so, get on to the move on. Starry topic. Starry, starry, mate. Guys, we had talks with the council this morning. It's kind of hard to believe, you know, like we thought they were against us. No, they're not. They're for us. The council this morning actually brought in some tents and blankets for us this morning to help. At the same time, um, this afternoon they also brought in sandwiches for everybody after they had a, a big meeting they brought in a shit out of sandwiches for everybody for both the indigenous and us um, but also we also myself and andrew also spoke with police this afternoon um, they are on our side they told us that we're here they told us that we're here illegally without a permit we advised them that no we're here with indigenous rights and council are backing us so they're, they're going to keep keep it to a distance until council say otherwise. Um, and just one more topic, oh, yeah. one more topic. On the 4th of October, Uncle Teddy Hopkins has been given an invite personally and named Uncle Teddy Hopkins to uh, a meeting and a luncheon at Parliament House with the Prime Minister, Peter Beattie, John Howard and many more. Uncle Teddy's advised me to let everybody know also that he's going to be talking about us as well for doing what we're doing here in his park. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's really positive uh, that we've got this space for now um, if they're going to back off, but I, I'm just quite cautious of believing that they're on our side because they were telling us yeah. that sort of thing for you know two weeks or whatever it was over at post office square and then um when they saw that we were going to hold together and stand our ground that's when they came in i think that they're looking at what's happening and they're hoping that we tear each other to pieces just as that's what they were planning on or hoping for at post office square um and i think that that's why they're, they're backing off at the moment i think it just I guess reminds us and puts it back on us again that we have to prove them wrong on that and, and hold together. Yep. Uh, is it the 4th of October next year? No, this year. But it's all got, uh, uh, October is already gone. Well, will be next year then. Oh, next year. Next year, uh, yeah, I didn't read the bottom line. Maybe it's for December? Anyone else? Next year. Next year. Yeah, try to make the peace. Just send him the cards and he showed us here today. Alright, we'll go on to the next topic. Anyone else with anything else to say on that one? Alright, we're going to Lenny via Kathy on cricket. <laughs> Lenny couldn't make it, but he wanted to let people know there'll be a cricket match at 10 a.m. on Thursday. Um, oh, yeah. here. He's going to bring in all the gear. <laughs> Is it the backpackers yeah. against the Australians? <laughs> you got no change, brother. <laughs> you got no change. Uh, so, I Kathy, you get that one. Kathy, you're on, yes. you're on a few times. So. <laughs> um, oh, lighting. Um, I was going to propose um, one of the issues up here late at night, um, perhaps other people can maybe comment, is the lighting. Um, hard to sort of see even one foot in front of you. Um, today, um, we, we bought this, um, it was $40, um, which we're happy to pay for, but um, we probably need a few more. Uh, so I was just gonna, maybe once we see how that works when it's dark, um, we can, um, if that's gonna work the best. So maybe propose that we buy three or four of those. There's also some, um, what do you call them? Uh, <laughs> lamps. Um, 
So we're going to need to attach them quite firmly to something, um, and people just need to be careful with them. But yeah. Alright, we've got some about those lights. There's, there's a situation like that, this, just because generally it's going to be probably too focused. And more, do more damage than good to people's eyesight. And that's all the darkness that kills people's eyesight. So when you turn away from the light, you actually can see less than you normally can here. <coughs> so, yeah. Right, I was just going to say tiki torches, but I think that's what she meant by carrot. Because they're real cheap and awesome. Dangerous. They're really stuck Feel strong enough, but don't blind the eyes. Uh, the LED and the there's LED camping, one. camping ones that are rechargeable. Maybe we can source, we can source that out at a camping shop. But um, yeah, there is LED ones, and we could use rechargeable batteries or something. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the um, the citronella. Or kerosene ones are very safe because um, it's it's fire like um, and it's just it's too there's too many random things that happen around here. Look at the kettle. Look at the kettle. We're talking about LED lighting, um, but these turned out to be the cheapest. Um, the LED ones were like sixty dollars or something like that for a, um, a sort of a stand-up unit. Um, but I'd suggest that we, we try this once it gets dark. And I agree, it can't be pointing at people, but we could have it sort of set so that it's over above people's eyes. But we'll have to see if it works. As an experienced camper, the best kind of lighting for general lighting is a, um, a, a gas powered mantle. Um, and a, you just mount it on a pole. Uh, for safety, and uh, if, the ma if it falls over, the mantle breaks, and then you don't have the fire, so you don't have the kerosene problem. But it gives the best kind of light. But the issue there is, um, uh, you know, you just you need a gas bottle, uh, which will will last you for the the time that you want, and, you, and people turn it off before they go to bed. Uh, did you have something to say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'd definitely advocate against the kerosene lamps. Okay. Kerosene in bottles around camps like this just very dangerous. Yep. Yeah, I think <laughs> probably with this thing, if it was mounted pointing up into one of the marquees, and then that would push the light yeah. back out, yeah. it won't be as harsh. But yep. it still light up a wide area around that. <coughs> Okay. Yeah. I was just going to say the safer and the sturdier the better. Um, I was just going to add to Hamish's suggestion about sort of mounting it upward. I don't know if there's any other photographers in the group, but anybody who is familiar <coughs> with photography, there's a silver screen that you can get that is purposely made for um, reflecting light back out. Like even the media has had them when they were doing coverage of our evictions. So if we can get a hold of one of those. Just alfoil. Alfoil can work. Cabo and alfoil. Can work. Whatever. But if we can get a hold of one of those somehow, like a tape maybe throwing them out in the rubbish bin is where I got mine. Um, but if we can get a hold of some of those, those work excellently for refracting the light back out and keeping it quite strong but still dispersing it enough that it's safe for the eyes and everything. So I, I guess keep an eye on rubbish bins. <laughs> oh. So we, we've got we've got sort of the mantles and the lights and the LEDs, so okay. Got... Maybe can we just um, say that maybe a few people could get together after the meeting, but we agreed like $200 for lighting or something? Uh, consensus on $200 for lighting. Yeah. Is these lights only going to be used while we're here, or then we move to a more light place? Then we're going to lose those two hundred bucks because we're not going to really going to use. We're not going to lose them, but we're not going to use the lights either. So maybe if we 
first see how these works to see if how they work out first and then maybe tomorrow on the general assembly we can start a small discussion about how it worked out yeah. um, well i'd say like we need them urgently like we actually need them tonight so if we wait till ga tomorrow it's going to be another night again like i just think there's a pressing security issue um and i yeah. think yeah, um, we just need to solve it and Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Not at all. I'm sick, I'm sorry. The three laser light the care path, not a problem. And position in the right place. Yep. Okay, can I ask how much we have, money wise? So we know, like, you know, they just proposed spending 200 bucks on lights. And for me, it helps to know, like, is that 200 out of 202? Or is that 200 out of 3,000? Yeah. Um, well, on site we have nothing at the moment, um, but Thomas does have the cash in, and I, I don't know how much is in it though. So, but it should it's, it should be at least two hundred. Did they cost forty bucks? Did you say that? Yeah, I would happily chuck in 15 bucks to instead of taking from the cash tin that we don't really know how much money it is. I would happily chuck in 15 bucks so that would maybe help the cash tin and you know we could use those money for better purposes in any kind of way. Not everyone can do that, man. Yeah, for sure, but personally I can do that and that's why I would love to take that issue. Just some of the small people Just Kathy was suggesting we pass that right now if anyone wants to. Where's your hat payment? <laughs> <laughs> um, so like, if we, if we don't get the balance for that, we'll just spend the balance out of the kitty on those lights tonight. Is there consensus on that? Yep. Alright, move on to the next topic. Um, Kathy Security. <laughs> okay, um, wanted to make a proposal for sort of organising the security roster um, for and see how it goes for tonight. Um, people might want to reflect on some of the incidents and issues overnight, but um, if not, then, you know, maybe a solutions-based discussion is, is better than sort of going over incidents, but um, that's, that's up to if people want to do that. Um, I wanted to propose that we have um, four people on the roster at any one time um, and that we have it in two hour stints. I think um, there's been a lot of pressure on people doing like all night stints um, and it just makes it really difficult. By the time it gets to three or four in the morning, people are just, you know, um, too exhausted to be able to, you know, be able to cope with that. Um, and having, having four people on um, also takes the pressure off. Um, what I wanted to propose in terms of the setup is that we have um, tables set up on either sort of front corner here. Um, so it's a bit more sort of an established post um, rather than people wandering around. And then everybody knows who's on security at any one time. Um, so if we had two tables set up um, with the, the Caro lamps that we've got and we can secure them firmly to the table, then it's well lit. And um, it's just sort of a, um, yeah, maybe a, a first port of call for people coming into the camp too. Um, so we know who's who's coming in. So that's the proposal. Uh, this kind of happened with the security, but not really on what Kathy said. But I heard that yesterday some council came and took foot photos of us, and I don't know how that had to do security and if that is true. But... Yeah. Can I hear? Yeah, mic check. Sorry, I heard that uh, yesterday the council came and took photos of us during the night, and uh, to me that's kind of a security issue that the security should put up to the yeah, general assembly. Hey, look. Last night, I know a lot of us, including myself, doing security around here. A lot of us are doing security around here, and a lot of us are getting really tired. Last night, unfortunately, people put their hands up, but by early hours this morning, the ones who were supposed to do it were already in bed. So we had a two-hour block with nobody doing security. When we were down last night, council come around, snuck in as they normally do, or the RPG, whatever they want to call them, them mongrel dogs, taking photos. If we would have had someone up, we would have been right. Because they won't come in while someone's standing around camp. They'll stay their distance. They actually come right into camp early hours this morning when everybody was passed out because a couple of people didn't want to get out of bed to do their, their job. I mean, I know myself, I'd love someone to jump up and have a go so I can get some sleep instead of going, you know, 
long shifts all day, every day, and then into the night. That would be, you know, more appreciated for me and the others who do do long shifts. Now, I'm sick of doing 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. because people don't want to get out of bed. Now, when they dress too, I'm going to burn out. Okay, so if anyone else can jump up and help, by all means, please. And not only that, we can show you where our tents are. If something goes wrong, you can come over and grab us and we can jump up and help. At least we get some rest, we can still unite together as one if someone gets into trouble or something's gone wrong. That's all I got to say. Um, I was just going to say that uh, two nights ago, I think it was, somebody who was on, whoever it was on security at that point in time had a small red flashing light on them. Ryan. Ryan. While he was walking around doing security, um, that was his own personal light, but I actually think that was a really fantastic idea for whoever is working security to be wearing something on them, preferably light, where security is very important at night, in order to show what individual is currently on security. And not only that, it shows to the camp who is on security, but it also makes it more significant that when you're passing on this red light to the other person that's on security, you cannot turn that light off until the next person is awake oh. and is actively doing security. So everyone is aware who is doing it and when they themselves are doing it. And I believe Ryan said they're about 10 bucks, but I know they can very often be available for like two or three bucks. So I think that maybe that's something that can go security or lighting fund. Um, last, yeah. Um, as I understood it last night, there were two individuals who at least told me that they were doing security and were super sloppy drunk. Mm. So if you want to, I mean, I don't know exactly what the alcohol guidelines are here. Uh, I, my sense is if you choose to be super sloppy drunk here, that's your deal, but please don't say you're gonna do security then, you know? Either security or super sloppy drunk. Never the twain shall meet, please. Thank you. <laughs> hey guys. I'd like to put a vote on buying these lamps, these lights, the bike lights, maybe four. I don't know how much they could cost. We couldn't might buy them at, yeah, two maybe might be enough. Maybe an op shop, five bucks, whatever. But yeah, I'd like to put a vote on that. Yeah. yeah. If people can do security tonight, could you? I've just um, got a bit of a roster going, so. Yeah. Yeah, see Kathy after it for security. Um, Aaron. Um, I don't know if the person who made it's here. It's not a big deal, but I just really, really hate this sign. I don't know if you've seen it. It's been around since day one. It's been breaking my heart, and I was going to destroy it. <laughs> Is that all good? We can see. Why do you hate it? Uh, I. I I don't think an individual can make a sign speaking for the 99% about such specific issues. I don't, yeah. Can I get rid of it? Is that all good? Yep. Yeah. Wicked. Awesome. Um, and, um... Just, can we take a picture of it first? Yeah, there's one on the website. I was actually going to say I want to take it off the website too, but... Yeah, it's on the face. I don't know. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of it. All right, cool. And, um... I got a sign up there about Occupump. It's going to be a group workout session every second day. And we're going to have a really sexy revolution with heaps of abs and shit. And so 4, 4 p.m. We'll just run around the oval and. Oh, hey, mate. Uh, <laughs> well, on the sign it says, you know, trainers wanted because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So you know, I do push-ups and sit-ups, and I can run around in a circle. Star jumps. Yeah. So we need trainers. I'll try. Yeah, you can help with training. We could, so, four, I was just thinking uh, 4 p.m. Because, you know, not many morning people around. And I was thinking maybe once a week, maybe take it to the pool and do laps as well. Well, um,
Mike Jack. So, I was talking to the man at the school today, and he said they have water polo every afternoon except Thursdays, so he said it'd be great if we wanted to go over there on Thursdays and do something along All those right, lines. Sweet. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, so, anyone wanting to get involved with that? See, Aaron. Anyone else want to bring anything else up? Um, just for the end of, I, I guess this sign was that sign there on the. Okay. Um, so, I just want to bring two quick things up. Uh, the gentleman who owns the behind or between the walls. Uh, music center it's a practice area he's going to be joining us some evening here at a general assembly in order to talk with the general assembly about hosting an event up at be between the walls which is just up here on manning street it's i think 42 manning street so just i know that it had been talked about sunday night maybe but it hasn't been brought up a whole lot since then so just that we keep that in mind for when he arrives, we're able to say these are some concrete ideas that we have that we want to present to you as something to do at be between the walls. Um, so I've been in very good contact with him. Uh, and the other thing that I looked at was I, I had announced last evening and it had been brought up at the GA before about having a first aid team. Uh, I currently have five people who have come forward to me as individuals who are interested in being involved on the first aid team. Problem is, is I don't think all of them are camping out here. Um, so I actually looked at St. John Ambulance and Red Cross. To sign up as an individual to take a first aid course, it costs a hundred bucks, which is a lot of pennies. Uh, it is a possibility to sign up as a group to get discount rates. What I'm going to suggest putting forward is if there is a group of individuals who are interested in getting first aid trained, we get ourselves together and approach both St. John's Ambulance and Red Cross, which I understand are both very well received in Australia, and ask them for an even further discounted rate or the possibility of doing a first aid course here. Or oh, just, just an uh, idea of generally things like that where you pay a lot of money, you're just really paying for the piece of paper that says that you can do it, not actually the skills. And if it's a lot of money, then I reckon it'll all be online and very easy to learn. There are online yeah. courses. So yeah, I'd rather not put the money just to have the little document that says you can do it and just learn how to do it. But whatever. Well, I'm I'm suggesting uh, ask them to give us training for free mm. and support. Okay, yeah. So the only thing is, is that St. John's I know for sure is 100% non-profit. So okay. They don't actually make any money other than the courses that they do. So um, I think that they'll probably be a little bit reluctant. Okay. But there are other places that do registered courses that are recognised. Um, for a lot cheaper, for about fifty dollars. Okay. And they're they're through different agencies. They're not ambulances, but they're still, you know, registered places. And they could probably do us a discount even further than that because they're not nonprofit. Okay. So if we could look into that, I I would greatly enjoy any help. Yeah. I am not from here. I may I'll, be able to tell. So I'm up. not as familiar as some. Australians, maybe. A lot, in a lot of the community centres around yeah. our country, they do do free first aid courses. Yeah. Um, it'd just be a matter of finding a community centre local that's doing them. Most basic first aid courses are free, okay, um, without CPR and stuff. Um, surf life-saving dogs for free too. Yeah. Um, on the issue of um, whether it's um, uh, whether you're just getting a piece of paper or not, I agree partially. There's certainly a lot you can learn online, like um, how to treat poisons and things like that. There's certain things like um, doing bandages and slings and practicing CPR on a dummy. Um, you can't replace that. I've done it the course myself, 
I'll, it was a long time ago, so don't come to me if or don't. I'll, 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 try and, I'll let someone else try and save you first. But, um, but so it, 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 you forget. Um, I could probably still do it at a pinch, but because you'd be doing it fresh, well, you know, for the next six months, let's say we've got this going for six months, we'd have someone with a fresh um, uh, experience of doing that CPR on the dummy. So, yeah, so I think it would be a valuable thing to do, although I'd take the point, there's a lot that we can learn online without having to do it. We'll come back to another, you'll pick it up straight away. Don't know, we so, <laughs> just go, I'm stuck this. I've been waiting for a oh, while. Sorry, brother. And I just want to add, just shortly, uh, it might free or charge uh, a lot of us, even me, like uh, we've done it probably ages ago, but it only requires a refreshment course yeah. and it will be cheaper. Like I think uh, there's places charging 30, 40 bucks, max $50 for, for a refreshment course. So I don't know, hopefully we can get something free. Like. That would, that would be awesome. And also, also a booklet. We will start getting first aid. Anyone who's got first wrong. aid books, we'll start bringing them in. Not that we have a computer, but if we did, I've got first aid books. I can. Um, I'm a super from John, first aid officer. I can bring the first aid books. I've got a couple of sets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just trying to ascertain if there are people who are interested in taking this course if we can get it for a small amount or for free from whatever organization if you're interested I'd like to talk to you this evening people who already have it and are willing to get involved on the first aid team I need to hear from you because I really think it's important that as we grow we're prepared for these sort of things That's on this morning. Okay. I've done my senior first day, but it's expired. Okay, I'll get your contacts <laughs> after if you're interested. I was just going to say I'll do the same thing, I did mine three days ago. Oh, perfect. I've done first day this morning, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's all I have to say about it. Uh, is there any other... Yep. Uh, <clears throat> I saw something really cool that... Uh, um, Occupy Manchester have done. They've just made signs and put a bit of rope on it and it said uh, I'm only here because of corporate greed and they just went out to the cities and put them on the dummies inside of shops. <laughs> so that's a really easy thing and uh, like what I'm seeing is lacking that we don't really have any plans for tomorrow. Like who knows what are we gonna do tomorrow? <laughs> Nobody knows. And uh, Unless we have a working group who's not always here because people don't even know which ones that are in in different working groups and It would be cool if we had a small discussion on every General Assembly what, what we can do the next day And the, the people that are interested in doing that should just do it after the General Assembly put the stuff together And just plan for the next day then that way we're always staying active and always have different plans for the next day And uh, yeah, now we only have plans for Saturday and Wednesday to do banners, but we're not actually doing anything on the streets to get more people or anything like that. Yeah. Would you like to do on the dummy thing tomorrow? Um, yeah. <laughs> why, why don't we um, hold this just to admit, anyone interested in sort of planning that and being involved in that sort of activism, why don't we just stay back after this and, and we can get something going for tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, any other? I'll, I'll just quickly mention about uh, community newspaper today um, it wasn't about Occupy but first first page on the South Eastern newspaper local paper that's dropped out for free uh, uh, quest paper um, we mentioned today that there was there's over a hundred thousand Australians yet just here in Queensland southeastern Brisbane that are in a hidden poverty um, and and part of that, there's 50,000 kids, 50,000 kids a week are starving. Like, there, there is a big problem. So, I'm just bringing this up because it's, it's one of the whys. We've got, we've got a lot of, all this that we're doing right here is, is because of economic problems that we're having. We're in a financial crisis right now and a lot of the, the stuff that's going on is hidden. So uh, I'll try and bring the newspaper tomorrow so everyone can have a 
read of it because it's pretty interesting. The survey's pretty um, hardly backed up because it's from Food Bank uh, Australia. So they're, they're one of the guys that organise trying to gather food for the poor. Um, but yeah, just wanted to add that up. That it's just a community notice. Yep. Um, and after this, just if everybody just stays here and maybe we can borrow Shan's computer to watch the, uh, it's like a three minute video of the Madrid thing and it's freaking awesome, I just tell you. And you, I can't really describe it, you have to see it, that's it. And if everybody would love to see that, that I'm really encouraging you all to just stay here and if we can watch it on the on Shannon's computer, that would be freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, just telling people that you probably shouldn't cut into that, but um, at 7 o'clock there's the organising meeting for the free university, which will be happening on Sunday too. So. When's that, sorry? 7. 7 o'clock. Tonight. Yeah. We're here. Yeah. Um, yeah, plus. Yeah. Um, yeah, at 7 o'clock there's the Free University meeting here. There's also this happening at 6.30 tonight. Political Memoirs of a 60s Radical, Janie Stone Speaks at QUT, QUT Gardens Point. I don't know how much time we have with time now. Oh, it's starting right now. <laughs> um, and tomorrow, Wednesday, um, this, uh, this part of Brisbane City Council, kind of the soft end of it, called Homeless Connect came by and dropped off a bunch of flyers and tomorrow they have a thing where they can pick us up um, at West End Community Center or something like that at 7.30 in the morning and whoever wants to go can go get food and all kinds of supplies and everything. If you could please just stop playing with that for a second then, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, and there's flyers about it here. I don't know how often it is, but it's fantastic that we can interface with them you know, from without the system while they do the similar thing, working with the homeless and disadvantaged from within the system. And then I think it's at noon, the meeting for the preparation for Saturday. Is that right? Yes. Hamish? Yeah. Tomorrow, the meeting to prepare for the oh, yeah, protest? Midday. 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 Tomorrow so noonish. For the protest for Saturday. So that's what I know of tomorrow. Oh, and by the way, and tonight, uh, whoever's interested, um, Kings of Leon are playing at BEC with. Um, it would cost you like 120 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> we are so bleeding brainwashed, okay? Mm -hmm. Just because a concert happens and it's a rich ticket price doesn't mean you have to automatically click off and ignore it. Like you can do what's called um, sit, sit outside. I was going to suggest I, I need to make some money, so I was going to busk outside. We can bring some flyers, we can bring some posters, we can have a good time, we can invite people, we can spread the word, etc. And um, I was hoping to try and get a hold of them to see if, if they're playing down in the Gold Coast tomorrow night. Um, so if they, it's too late obviously for them to make a little appearance here today, but if they could tomorrow, you know, mm -hmm. like I've had, I've had success with going against un, insur, apparently unsurmountable odds of getting through to some big name artist and they actually do have a heart and they do care and they are willing to meet with people. So that's tonight. Please see me afterwards if you want to go. Thank you. Oh, see, they're calling already. Can you turn that off just for a sec? Why does it come off?